Oh, God. Oh, why am I so itchy? Why? Why is my butthole itch? Yeah, buddy. Lightweight, baby! I just hit 300 subscribers on YouTube. That is awesome. That is very, very cool. Thank you so much for all of you and your support. What's up, guys? I'm Josh and I Lift Things, and I'm here to talk about the butthole itching ants in your teething, spoiler, useless beta alanine. For those that are unaware, beta alanine, and if you can't tell by the intro, is the ingredient in most pre-workouts that gives people that itchy or tingly sensation. To be fair, a lot of people do not feel this effect, or some people even enjoy it. That being said, a lot of people actually despise the feeling, me being one of them. It makes me feel like I just chugged a bottle of Robitussin and asked me how I know. This begs the question, why is it included in every single pre-workout? Supposedly, it enhances performance. I personally think there's a more sinister reason for its inclusion, but stick around to the end to see my conspiracy theory on that. Depending on the pre workout you get it's probably going to be dose anywhere from like half a gram to four grams and some better pre-workouts all the way up to six grams but for now let's see if it actually has any real impact on performance and just like when you're researching any other supplement we should first start off by looking at the examine article shout out examine if you ever have any questions about a certain supplement make sure you use this website they will be a great great resource for you you do have to pay to have the full unlocked version of everything but it is well worth it. What is beta alanine? Beta alanine is a non proteinogenic amino acid, i.e., it is not incorporated into proteins during translation. I'm sure you've heard of amino acids before. There are roughly 20 to 22 of them, depending on what species you're talking about. And this includes the essential amino acids, the branch chain amino acids, the conditionally essential amino acids, and a lot of other terms that don't really matter. But those are all the proteinogenic amino acids. Beta alanine is a non proteinogenic amino acid. Same with creatine. It is synthesized in the liver and can be ingested in the diet through animal based foods such as beef and chicken. Once ingested, beta alanine combines with histidine within skeletal muscle and other organs to form carnosine. Beta alanine is the limiting factor in muscle carnosine synthesis. That is essentially its main function. It acts as a precursor to carnosine. What are its main benefits? Well, it seems to enhance muscular endurance during high intensity exercise lasting 1 to 10 minutes. Examples of exercise that may be enhanced by beta alanine supplementation include 400 to 1500 meter running and 100 to 400 meter swimming. Oddly specific, but whatever. The main drawback could be large doses may cause a tingling feeling called paresthesia. It is harmless, but some people find the sensation uncomfortable. Yeah, you will have an itch in your foot that you have to take off your shoe to actually reach. Your butthole will itch. You will break a finger off inside of you trying to scratch it. You may have some flushing effects. Your skin may turn a little red. I despise it. It feels like you have ants in your skin. I really do not like this feel whatsoever. Again, some people like it, so pick your poison. How how does beta alanine work? When it is ingested, it turns into the molecule carnosine, which acts as an acid buffer in the body. Carnosine is stored in cells and released in response to drops in pH. During intense exercise, carnosine binds to hydrogen ions to attenuate the decline in intracellular pH, allowing for a longer duration of exercise at higher intensity. Now the dosage information, this will become very important later on. Studies have investigated a range of 3.2 to 6.4 grams of beta alanine per day. To avoid paresthesia, a dose of 0.8 to 1.6 grams of beta alanine every 3 to 4 hours is recommended. There's also sustained release formulations available that permit the use of greater doses without the risk of paresthesia. Although beta alanine is commonly included in pre workout stacks, the timing of ingestion does not influence its effectiveness. Now, all of these studies here are behind a paywall, but with a little bit of Google Foo, we can find some interesting ones. Here we have beta alanine supplementation for athletic performance and update. This paper goes into much more depth about the actual mechanisms at play when you are supplementing beta alanine. For instance, it says here skeletal muscle is unable to synthesize the two carnosine precursors L-histidine and B-alanine, so the concentration of intracellular carnosine is largely dependent on the uptake of these amino acids from the bloodstream. The affinity of carnosine synthetase for L-histidine is greater than beta-alanine in addition to the fact that L-histidine is in greater concentrations in plasma than beta-alanine. And as a consequence, it is considered that beta alanine is the rate limiting precursor of skeletal muscle carnosine concentration. It's been well established that chronic supplementation of beta alanine can significantly increase muscle carnosine concentration that in turn may improve athletic performance and exercise tasks that accrue a high level of muscle acidosis. Unfortunately, studies on sport specific performance have been met with varying results, small but potentially worthwhile improvements in a four minute cycling time trial 
worthwhile improvements in 100 and 200 meter swimming performances. In contrast, it also has apparently provided no benefit to 400 meter running performance in trained sprinters and failed to improve endurance cycling performance in well-trained cyclists. There are countless more uh, reviews here that you can look at, and they generally conclude that beta alanine supplementation serves to increase muscle carnosine content. It also may be a potent antioxidant. Antioxidants are great for general health, but around your workout window, they typically want to be avoided just for the fact that you actually want to create inflammation in your muscles when you are exercising. It can actually blunt the training response when you take an antioxidant around your training. Here again, they say if your exercise lasts about about one to seven minutes, then it may be useful for you. And that entire review is very, very interesting. There does seem to be some good things about beta alanine. So why would I call it useless? Well, again, if it's an antioxidant and that's not really helping anything, at least as far as us regular gym bros go, but also most of our exercises aren't taking one to seven minutes. Here's a quick study of the effect of 10 week beta alanine supplementation on competition and training performance in elite swimmers. And there was a transient improvement with supplementation after four weeks, but there's unclear effects at 10 weeks and no meaningful changes in blood chemistry. Beta alanine supplementation appears to have a minimal effect on swimming performance in non-laboratory controlled real world training and competition settings. Here we have effects of beta alanine supplementation on exercise performance, a meta-analysis by Hobson. In the section specifically for exercise intensity and duration, they talk about calcium sensitivity or being a sacrificial peptide, and all that is very, very interesting, but is it useful for people just in the gym? The data in this meta-analysis clearly shows that exercise of a duration less than 60 seconds is not improved by beta-alanine supplementation, while exercise of 60 to 240 seconds clearly is improved and exercise over 240 is also improved, although to a lesser extent. And here, of course, even with confounding factors, they talk about how several studies included in this meta-analysis alone, and more than likely the others we've already covered, have used commercially available supplements, the purity of which does not appear to have been tested and or reported. Hell, they could even have banned substances and or different concentrations of ingredients to those listed on the supplement container. Now, here is the very important detail. You probably heard these numbers parroted by people like More Plates, More Dates, Greg Doucette, or even me in my pre-workout video. The median overall effect of beta alanine supplementation is a 2.85% improvement in the outcome of an exercise measure when 179 grams of beta alanine is supplemented. What is the exercise measure? Well, it's uh, some type of exercise that you do for greater than 60 seconds to about 240 seconds. So remember these numbers, roughly a 2.85% increase in exercises lasting over a minute when you have supplemented 179 grams of beta alanine. This begs the question, how in the hell do you get to an accumulative dose of 179 grams of beta alanine? Thankfully, this study, Beta Alanine Supplementation by Hoffman, is very, very detailed when talking about the dosaging and everything else that you may need to know. They talk about dosing regimens that increase carnosine, peak plasma levels to 50% and yada, yada, yada. But it unfortunately does not touch on getting to 179 grams. People much smarter than me have essentially found out that to get to the 179 gram cumulative dose for beta alanine, you have to take about 6.4 grams every single day to get there within about 28 days. Meaning from the day you start taking beta alanine, you must take 6.4 grams every single day and you will reach quote unquote saturation to get your 2.8% increase in exercises that are only 60 seconds or greater after one month. This means if you get your beta alanine only in your pre-workout, you are now taking your pre-workout every single day, which is not recommended for a myriad of reasons. One, it's expensive and is just completely unnecessary. Two, if your pre-workout includes stimulants, you should really be cycling those stimulants in the first place. Three, depending on what nootropics are in there, you may also want to be taking somewhat regular breaks from those. And four, it's a fucking waste. It's not useful for virtually anybody who is just lifting weights. Here's another systematic review, the effects of beta alanine supplementation on performance by Quenzel. There appears to be some evidence from this review that supplementation with beta alanine may increase athletic performance. However, there is insufficient evidence to examining the safety 
of beta-alanine supplementation and its side effects. It is therefore recommended to err on the side of caution in using beta-alanine as an ergogenic aid until there is sufficient evidence confirming its safety. This is something that isn't considered all that often. For all of these kind of, I'll say, quote-unquote, newer supplements, even though they come and go in the public zeitgeist every like 10 years or so, there isn't too much data speaking to their safety or long-term health effects. People will ask this question about creatine all the time. Is it safe? Is it safe? When it's literally the most studied exercise, performance, supplement, ergogenic aid out there. But yet they don't ask it when they're worried about insect steroids like turkesterone or fucking butthole itching 1000s like beta alanine. Another systematic review and meta-analysis, beta alanine supplementation to improve exercise capacity and performance. 40 studies, 65 different protocols for training with 70 exercise measures and 1,461 participants. Meta-regression demonstrated that exercise duration significantly moderated effect sizes. Subgroup analyses also identified the type of exercise as a significant moderator of effect sizes within an exercise time frame of 0.5 to 10 minutes with greater effect sizes for exercise capacity versus performance. There is no moderating effect of training status, intermittent or continuous exercise, or total amount of beta alanine ingested. Co-supplementation with sodium bicarbonate resulted in the largest effect size when compared with placebo. So what the fuck does this mean? It means the status of the trainee did not affect the results. Continuous exercise or intermittent, i.e. taking breaks in between things, didn't seem to affect stuff. And also, total amount of beta alanine ingested did not seem to affect findings. That is very interesting. And also, co-supplementation with sodium bicarbonate, that's fucking baking soda probably acts as another form of buffer. Yeah, this one is very interesting and kind of seems to throw out a lot of the stuff that we've learned already. And now finally, we have the International Society of Sports Nutrition Position Stand, beta alanine. By the way, shout out Trexler. And they wrap it up pretty well here. Four weeks of beta alanine supplementation significantly augments muscle carnosine concentrations. Beta alanine does appear to be safe for healthy populations at recommended doses. The only reported side effect is the paresthesia, which is the tingling and itching but that could be attenuated with a lower dose. Daily supplementation with four to six grams of beta alanine for at least two to four weeks has been shown to improve exercise performance with more pronounced effects in open endpoint tasks or time trials lasting one to four minutes in duration. Beta alanine seems to attenuate neuromuscular fatigue, particularly in older subjects, and preliminary evidence indicates that beta alanine may improve tactical performance. Combining beta alanine with other single or multi-ingredient supplements may be advantageous when supplementation of beta alanine is high enough already and long enough, minimum of four weeks. More research is needed to determine the effects of beta alanine on strength, endurance performance beyond 25 minutes in duration, and other health-related benefits associated with carnosine. What does all this mean? If you are a regular guy in the gym, you probably aren't doing too many exercises that last greater than one minute. And if you are, do you really need a performance increase of roughly 2.8%? If you are a sprinter or a swimmer or some other athlete that is doing some type of anaerobic task, then sure, go for it. It seems that it could be beneficial for you, especially if you're in competition and you want to eke out whatever bit of performance that you can. If you just want to be strong and get big and look good, it is not needed and probably not helpful whatsoever. How many of your sets are lasting over a minute? And once again, to get the dosage that even gives you this increase in performance, you have to be taking 6.4 grams of beta alanine every single day for 28 days. Most pre-workouts will be closer to the three gram mark. That means it'll take you about two months to actually get to this accumulative dose that will give you this 2.8% increase in performance in exercises that last over a minute. Let's say you have a pre-workout with one gram of beta alanine in it, which is not unheard of. And let's say you work out four days a week and you are taking your pre-workout every single day that you exercise. Congrats. You are getting nothing from the beta alanine other than some tingly or itchiness, which you may or may not hate. Essentially, what this all means is for most people in most situations, you're not going to be getting shit from your beta alanine supplementation, a.k.a. It is useless. And now for my grand conspiracy theory, why would supplement manufacturers put in an ingredient which costs them money if it does offer no real ergogenic aid for the vast majority of people who consume said product? In my opinion, supplement manufacturers add beta alanine to their pre-workouts because it's something you can feel. When an ignorant person can feel their pre-workout kicking in or working, they will then think that it is a good and powerful and strong pre-workout. This 
then reinforces the placebo and instead of just actually attributing your increase in performance to stimulants electrolytes or anything else they then attribute it to this useless supplement beta alanine now to give one last recap beta alanine non-proteinogenic amino acid is a precursor for muscle carnosine supplementation of beta alanine does raise carnosine levels that can be very useful for people doing some aerobic forms of tasks you need to reach a cumulative dose of 179 grams which takes about 28 days of supplementing 6.4 grams of beta alanine every single day that will give you about a 2.8 percent increase in performance in exercises lasting from one to four minutes it doesn't seem to be all that useful for anything after four minutes and it's pretty much definitely not useful for anything below one minute if you are a regular gym bro it is probably not useful for you the tingling sucks and i think that supplement manufacturers only include it so that way ignorant people think that they can feel the pre-workout working beta alanine sucks and guys that is the video if you like the style of content do me a favor hit the like button if you like it leave me a comment let me know why i'm an idiot or why you love beta alanine i respond to every single one of them and it really really helps out the channel make sure you subscribe to see the next video i post a new one every single monday wednesday and friday and then also make sure you share to a buddy if you really like the style of content you can follow all of these socials down below i post exclusive content there sometimes not all that often and as always thank you so much for watching and have a great day